I've always drawn pretty much since the age of like two and a half or three years old. My parents, especially my mother, was artistic and she would always encourage my wanting to draw or paint. I don't think I ever considered that as an actual career until I went to City College here in San Francisco. My name is Mark Nagata. Um, I would consider myself an artist first and a toy maker, toy collector uh, second. So prior to the toy company I have now, Max Toy Company, I was a freelance illustrator during the 90s. And one of the bigger assignments that I got to work on were children's horror book covers like uh, Goosebumps. The particular series I worked on was called Give Yourself Goosebumps. But I also did covers for Graveyard School and Spine Tinglers and a, a whole bunch of other one-off sort of Goosebump-like um, series. Basically, yeah, I think most of these are from the Goosebump series. There's a few here that like uh, off to the side, this one with the skeleton is a graveyard school. And this one was actually a portfolio piece, but I like to pull it out because it's uh, one of my nieces <laughs> who now has a child of her own, but back then she was just a teenager. So it's, it's always funny to pull that out and, and embarrass her from time to time. Originally, I wanted to go into film. I was like, you know, one of those Star Wars kids who loved special effects and you know Ray Harryhausen and stop motion and stuff and I used to make my own little Super 8 movies but when I was taking some film courses in uh, City College one of the courses was doing film storyboarding and I didn't realize a storyboard should really just be a series of quick sketches just kind of rough out a scene and what I literally did was I fully painted all the scenes with details and pen and ink and all kinds of stuff. And the instructor took one look at it and he said, he goes, oh, no, you are you should be in the art department. <laughs> you know, like, so you definitely have an ability to draw and paint. And that's like what I think you should pursue. I have to say, that's the guy who really put me down the path of going into art as sort of like a career or profession. For the most part, I'm self-taught and learning to use an airbrush was really one of the keys to, I would say, I don't, not necessarily my success, but my passion, which has carried itself through all the different things I've done. The airbrush for me was always something that I really loved. I loved looking at artists who were airbrush artists. And at the time there was a lot of Japanese guys that were like super master airbrush guys. And some of those guys are still around, like Soriyama. It's, you know, the guy who does the chrome robot women and stuff. And, but he's primarily an airbrush artist. And again, going through school, uh, you know, I got a lot of grief about using the airbrush because everybody kept saying, oh, it looks too commercial and it's too slick. But what they didn't realize is that's exactly what I wanted to do. So I crafted my own portfolio full of just whatever commercial looking pieces and went to New York with a fellow schoolmate and we hit the pavement, got ourselves a rep on the last day we were there. And pretty much from the time I came back from that trip, I started my freelance career doing like these book covers and whatnot. And, and again, using the airbrush. Then if I flash forward to now, I have a toy company and I still use the airbrush in actually painting some of these actual toys. And again, employing bright colors. So I can, in hindsight, I can see a through line of using this one tool, the airbrush, and then using these bright colors all the way through uh, my artistic journey. I do say I am a toy maker. I don't personally sculpt the figures. We'll hire people who are much more capable at doing that. Early on, I would design the figures that eventually would become toys. So I would do drawings like the front side and back of it, and then hire a sculptor to actually sculpt the figure and then we would have the figure produced at first in China and then eventually in Japan. Now, uh, when we do licensed figures, because we're working with bigger companies who own these properties, we have to be very careful about how the character looks. So we definitely use sculptors that can stay on specific 
parameters about what these characters are, say like Ultraman, and you know, they have to be approved <laughs> by a, a much bigger company. So um, there's a little less leeway in terms of what we can do there. So at this point, I feel like mostly what I do is a lot of coordination uh, and a lot of pre-planning, uh, but then I let people who are much better at doing certain things like sculpting, <laughs> I let them do that because uh, that's, you know, we work with some of the top guys uh, in the industry. Um, and then the result is we get, you know, some cool looking toys. Right around the time that my freelance career was kind of slowing down, uh, mostly due to Photoshop coming in and taking away a lot of the work that I would have been hired to do, um, I was kind of in a transition period and I wasn't quite sure what to do. And so in the meantime, I had already started collecting Japanese toys. And so I was invited to um, bring some of my toys <laughs> to a photo shoot that this guy Jimbo, Jimbo Madison, <laughs> was uh, publishing a book called So Crazy Japanese Toys, and he wanted to borrow some toys to, to put into his, um, into his book. And so it was at that photo shoot that basically myself, another collector, and Jimbo, we all sort of coalesced around this idea of, um, hey, it'd be cool to do like a zine uh, about Japanese toys because it seems like a lot of designers, a lot of you know our fellow friends um, were all visually interested in these toys but we really didn't know anything about them but we knew they just look cool and um, at first we were just gonna do like a black and white kind of Xerox sort of thing and Jimbo just spoke up he's like oh like dudes you guys got to do it full color you got to get national distribution you got to do magazine style um, you know, sell ads in it, sell subscriptions, and, and I, literally he just like laid everything out and that became this toy magazine called Super 7 Magazine. And so from, from that point forward, for about the next four years or so, um, that became my focus or slash career, uh, is sort of like being magazine producer and um, you know, wrangling all the content for that. But I was still able to do my artwork um, to put into the issues, so that, you know, I was still trying to keep my artwork going. Um, and then at that point, it just, you know, I, I was feeling like I was losing my identity, to be honest, and uh, I just became this micromanager of like all these different projects, and I was like super, super depressed about it because that's not what I wanted to do like I'm a very creative person and I don't want to just be a you know a whatever middle level <laughs> manager or something so I left that magazine and the first thing I knew I wanted to do was start my own toy company uh, and I had my son Max at the time and I was like okay I'm gonna name it Max Toy Company and I, I had the logo in my head and and that's the genesis of what I do now. So for the last 18 years, we've done Max Toy Company. So I enjoy creating. What I don't enjoy is countless meetings and hurdles <laughs> to get something done. So I would say that's the only downside to certain things that maybe have to be licensed is your creativity is not as free as it is to create your own toy, which of course is totally up to you and you know whatever sculptor you're working with. So having said that, Max Toy Company for me is a nice balance because on one hand we do some licensed items, but on the other hand, I'm able to still do my own original creations. Presently, the way I can still utilize my art or my painting skills besides painting on the actual toys is we package our toys with header cards, so like little cardboard things that kind of seal the top of the, the packaging. And um, I'm still able to like illustrate or paint the packaging that goes on these. Um, and, and we do sort of like a retro style, so um, you know, a lot of the packaging is reminiscent of the 
artwork from the 60s and 70s toys that I'm collecting. I'm definitely heavily influenced by that era. That's where I'll leave it for now. If I have a little more time, I'll probably add some color. The one thing about my personality is I never really set an end goal for anything. So when you're saying, do I feel proud about, you know, one aspect or another of, of any of my careers? I mean, I think I feel proud that I've accomplished a certain amount of something, but I don't think I ever look at it that way. I think I just roll with each day as it comes along. And I'm fully aware that you know, anything can happen. I don't know, toys could be banned, <laughs> so then I might have to become something else. I don't dwell on an end point, and I just sort of roll with what's happening in the moment. And that main thing is just being creative and just staying uh, creative. So uh, the best way to follow what I'm doing, what I'm collecting, and even the food I'm eating is on my Instagram. Uh, so that's Max Toy Co. Uh, and check out the stories because that's usually where I put the food. And then if you want to look at the stuff we're actually selling, uh, then go to maxtoyco.com. I think I'm not a very deep person, <laughs> to be honest. You know, like uh, I'm sort of, I like to satisfy my creative uh, impulse, whether it's painting a toy painting a painting, you know, um, and that's sort of the end goal, I think, what I've learned, that's when I'm the most happy or the most bliss, um, but I don't really analyze it much. <laughs> so, like, I don't think, like, well, what's making me tick? Why, you know, yeah. why do I keep getting, buying toys? Like, what's wrong with me? You know, I'm just, that's not how I'm built, you know, like, whereas my wife will point it out. She'll say, oh, well, you see you're doing, you know, because of this, you know, and I'm like, Oh yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <You know? laughs>